so this week we're going to talk more about patina and colorization using some of the uh, hottest new products out on the mixed media market. We've already discussed a bit about the Swelligant Patina System line, which really is doing well and I love because you have three parts to it. You have the metal coatings, you have the dioxides, and then you have the traditional patinas. Um, we can hardly keep the metal coatings and the traditional patinas in stock. The dioxides take a little playing with, but they're worth your time because they are true products to the metal trade. Uh, they actually come from the plating trade, and they bond with the metal, so they're not a surface layer. So that's kind of cool. If you want to get to know that dioxide, it's worth the learning curve. It's worth the time to learn to use it. On the other hand, you know, we have Gilder Space. We've done quite a few videos about Gilder Space. Gilder Space is real immediate. You pop over that can, you pop open that can and you go for it. You rub it on with your finger or with a glove or with a rag or a brush. You can break it down a little bit with paint thinner, yada yada. And there you go. It does need to be sealed and don't use Renaissance wax to do it. It'll take it off. The best thing I found is matte spray lacquer for over Gilder's paste. Good product. Um, we're carrying it. I don't foresee quitting anytime soon. Um, new product. Uh, a lot of people have been anticipating that has come out and I've decided to bring it in is the Ranger slash Vintage ink paints. I think they're calling them inks. Um, they're packaged a lot like your alcohol inks. They're not alcohol inks. Uh, alcohol inks need to be heat set. Um, although heat setting these is a good idea too from what I've found so far. Um, they're just a different animal. They're kind of runny a little bit like an ink, but they have more of a quality of a metal paint. Uh, they work really super well with Bisu Boutique Express, which you know we have in seven finishes plus raw. So we have we have the chocolate type brass and the rusty black dark stuff. We have the copper look, but we also have a brilliant silver. We have a fabulous Russian gold plate, which is an authentic vintage finish. We have. Um, the green patina finish. We have your standard brass socks. I'm finding a lot of these products work super well on raw brass. It's like why pay for the plating, right? If you're just going over it. You know, if you want to get it darkened up, um, heat the piece first with a torch or an, a torch or an embossing gun. Put uh, the swelling and darkening patina up first. Then go over it with your color buff it back if you want. Why buy plated? You know, I don't know my opinion. Um, but it does work, um, the Vintage uh, ink works really good over any of the plating finishes. I don't know if you want to go over an expensive finish with it, but you can. In fact, here's a, here's a case in point. I don't know if you can see this real well or not. I'm going to kind of come up toward the camera. This is Russian gold plate. And I made this ring from our Russian gold plate, which is very, very special. Nobody else has it. It's the closest thing you can get to an authentic, old-fashioned Haskell finish. But this is the Vintage Patina ink that's on here. And I think that color looks really good with the gold. And then I stuck a little old button down in the middle, so that's kind of cute. But I'll tell you what, uh, another experiment that I did... Okay, for example, um, this is our old Rosox. I don't know if you can get up on this rock. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Some people have said they feel that it looks kind of orangey uh, and that you have to clean it. It's true. You have to clean sterling, too. It's all to what you like. You know, if you like uh, an antique copper, then that's great. And we may reintroduce a little bit of antique copper in time. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. Because um, you can do some patina stuff to get your antique copper look, too. But this is so beautiful. You could just, like, wear this by itself. I don't know if I can get it on this wrist fast enough looks so beautiful on skin. We have this one at the site, but what I do want to tell you about it, you can't use it with swelling at traditional patina. Evidently, when this is made, the process, the way that it's made, it does have real copper, it does have real gold in it, but there's a sealant coat that probably accounts for the shine that's on it, and the patina won't go through it. So the only way you're going to get color on this, if you want to put color on it, is with something like the Ranger Vintage product. So that's why it's really good to have this whole arsenal of product to deal with. Um, here's an example. This is what happened 
when I put uh, the Swellagant uh, traditional patina in, what was it, Tiffany Green. It just basically matted it. Which is a cool look. This is not a lost piece by any means. I like it. I don't know if I'd do it again. Uh, so if I wanted to get a patina look on this, I'd use either Gilder's Paste in the patina color, or I would go for the Vintage ink, depending on the consistency and seal and look that I wanted. One thing that's really cool, too, about the Vintage inks are uh, you don't necessarily have to seal them, depending on how you put them on. They do have a glaze sealant. I'm, I'm still experimenting with that sealant. It's a good sealant, and it works fine. I, don't, I just don't know if I like the look of it. I have it on these earrings. And it kind of gives kind of a china glaze to it. So I'm thinking uh, maybe do another video using that stuff with polymer clay and the glaze. And it, it might really, really super look good over that. But I'm not liking it over metal as much. And that might be just because I have to play with it more. But anyway, enough of that yak, as I say. I'm going to bring you over to the other counter and show you some stuff I did. And then I'm going to bring you over to this counter and show you how to colorize a filigree bead and a couple other little cool things and tricks with the inks and applying them. It's really a no-brainer. There's no learning curve to it. You get your inks and you start playing and in five minutes you've got sweet success. It's a good, good product and I'm thankful for it even though I like it over my brass. <laughs> and I hope you will too. So anyway, um, let's get over to the counter and let me show you what I've done. Okay, so here's a whole array. Get my hand out of the way. A whole array <laughs> of, of things that I have done with the new inks, the new uh, Ranger Vintage inks, over certain things, it's over certain ways. This piece, for example, had been darkened with Swellagant Darkening a couple weeks ago. I think I did it in the video. And then um, I went back, buffed it out. And I added a little bit of um, the brass from Swellingant to it. And actually, this I don't think has any of the vintage ink on it. <laughs> yeah, this was an example. But what I did is I used Perfect Pearls Copper Mist. And that's another thing. That's another trick I found you that, that works really cool over this stuff. And then uh, finished it off. So that was cool. Um, let me do what I came here to do then, that's the vintage inks. This one was uh, first done with Swell again. This is a three piece. We saw this is the raggedy uh, flower. It's I think 750 for the three pieces in raw. I first did it with Swell again dioxides and it kind of pulled down in because it's a cut piece. So um, that's going to take a little bit of playing. But then I did the edges here. You would think this is Gilder's Paste. No, it's uh, the Swell again Brass finish over that. And then I tinged it in here and about with the new Vintage ink. So it's a combination of the two lines actually. And this bead is done completely with the Vintage inks. Um, to show you something else completely, this is a Rusty Black Ookie the Octopus. This is Vintage inks. The, the teal color and this orange color is all from Vintage. And here he is. Uh, he's, this one's not buffed out, this one is buffed out, so you see I went over it with a relieving block, just a little nail block you can use and raise some highlights in it, so there's a difference there. This is all what you like. Um, this piece was really cool. This was the one I showed you the other week when I was showing you the Messy Workshop, which is even messier now. Um, I had done some experimenting with the Vintage Inks, just laying it on. Well, now I buffed it back out with a reliefing block and kind of matted it down. And then, to finish it, I sprayed it with the Perfect Pearls Copper Mister, which is really a scrapbooking product. And I really don't know why I even did it, except it was sitting there. I hadn't tried it yet, so I did it. If you do that, you have to heat set it until it dries. And that's what I did, and it is awesome. I love it. Now this shows you the difference. This is Vintage. This, this is this is another interesting thing about the Vintage inks. Okay, I had already done this. So for a lark, just to see what would happen, I went and stuck this on my soldering block, and I torched it hard. Got it real good and hot. It never affected the Vintage inks at all. The fact that I torched them after the fact. No, I didn't torch directly on the inks. I torched the raw brass back, because this was a raw brass piece to begin with. And then I went over to my bench and I sponged it down with Swellagant Darkening Patina. And it immediately took this. I mean, it was like immediate. There was no waiting. It bloomed right now. 
And then, after that, I sprayed it down with the Ranger Mist, kind of the copper. And that's what accounts for these little copper glints in here. And then after this had cooled down, I did seal it with Krylon, Krylon Matte Acrylic Spray. So that's how that went. But it shows you the difference. Very cool. Very, very cool. Lots of fun playing around with it. Um, you can see how you can use the Vintage inks as, you know, really a virtual paint. This almost has kind of a shabby, chic, um, cold, old, cold paint enamel look to it, like the flower palette pens, but this is all the Vintage inks. Um, this is Vintage inks over our rusty black, not buffed out. This is Vintage inks over our chocolate ox in the teal color. Uh, this is from the Weathered Copper set, which is so far my favorite of all. I just wish they had more colors. The, th the one complaint that I do have about it is the colors are just a little loud for me. I like a more subdued color. I, I don't, you know, for spring, summer, a real, real hot, vibrant color is good, but I don't know. I, I'm going to have to play with it a little bit more, but I, but I do like it. But that's over the chocolate ox and buffed back out. This is very cool. This is a chocolate ox French charm. We've carried these charms like forever. And I did the teal color over it and then I buffed it out. And basically what I did was I painted it, let it set for a couple of minutes and I heat set it so it would get good and set. Waited till it cooled down and took my reliefing block, just scrubbed it out. And there you go. Could you, so could you imagine if you had a whole charm bracelet full of those? How neat would that be? And like all different colors. And then some little beaties and bobblies and maybe some found items or whatever. How neat would that be? So you might like to do that. It works really good over the chocolate ox. It works really good over the rusty. Um, over the old brass ox, our standard. Looks really awesome. And it probably will look good over the sterling finish too. Although I might think twice about putting a mixed media product on that since it is 99.9% 99 .9 fine silver and dang expensive. So I don't know. Um, think hard before you mess around with a lot of mixed media product on that finish since it's so high. I do know white and patina color Giller's Paste works really, really well with our sterling finish. Um, I'm sure this would too, just be careful because it's an investment. Okay, here's, I use this fuchsia color. This was torched first. Then I went over and I did the Swelligant Darkening Patina, as you can see here, and turned it all nice and dark. It looks almost like it had been in liver sulfur or something, but no, this was fast. Liver sulfur on brass takes time, in case you don't know that. Um, it's not fast like copper and sterling. And then I did uh, the kind of the fuchsia color over this and just let it run. And then I misted it with that copper stuff. And then it just really ran and extended. And I heat set it, waited and buffed it back and raised back out the gold uh, gold colored brass highlights on there. So that was kind of neat how that came out. And then here's some little earrings I worked on. These are the Russian. But I would say to save money, don't do this over the Russian. Do it over a raw brass because Russian is 18 karat gold base. It's expensive. Um, you could get a similar look over the raw. I would, I would go that route. Save your money so you can get more stuff. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to show you. I think you can see my little fairies, how they came out. You can tell I really like this color. I went for it a lot. But it's one of my faves that they did here. I mixed it up a little bit here. This was just all the teal and then buffed back out so you can see detail. And then here is a, a piece of patina brass that I had in the Art Nouveau. And I put a little bit of the um, green and the moss color out of the weathered copper set in the Vintage Ranger inks. Let it set. Heat set it buffed it out so that you could see the brass come back through and then I took the tabbed filigree that we have in raw brass at the site manipulated it around it and then this is ready to be made into a pendant and you would hang of course through these holes in the back so that you could have your pendant. If you've never tried doing manipulating brass around it's, it's no science to it really it's just being careful so that you don't break the filigree. But this is basically what I did this week um, a lot of fun stuff. If you want, go on my blog, which is, let me see, it's at bsuboutiques.typepad.com, jewelry making out of the outside of the box. If you go to the bsuboutiques.com website and click on the top toolbar on blog, 
um, it'll take you straight there and you'll see some of these experiments and more explanation about them because I blogged about all these pieces or most of them anyway yesterday so um, maybe you'd like to do that but meantime we're going to take a, a quick break so that I can move over to the other countertop and demonstrate a little bit to you about how you might want to put this color on your brass okay so welcome to the mess uh, is this place is getting messier by the minute and I'm not cleaning nothing out because you know we got the messy workshop uh, blog hop coming along soon so I hope you've read about that on the blog and maybe you're going to be part of that but just to show you a few things about how this stuff works okay as you can see I've got my little vintage inks all put around here you get uh, half a fluid ounce and that seems like it's not very much but it's basically I think about the same size as the alcohol ink yeah Here's alcohol ink. It's just the same size. But it works different. It's not alcohol ink. It's, it's like a paint, almost. Ink paint, if you will. Okay, so which color do I want to show? Well, I love this color. I think this is my favorite. I keep using it. And what you might want to do is keep something around to, um, and I had it and moved it here just like one of these long head pincers. It does get kind of gunked up in the nozzle, but you can you can clean it out easy enough. Just take a big old head pin and jump down in there and bust that up. Yep, good to go. All right. So basically what you use is you don't use a stroking action. I got a piece of clean raw brass here and a clean paintbrush. Um, I put it in a little well here, but you can actually squirt it right on the item. You're going to see me do that too. But you know, you want to conserve it. You don't want to waste it. So, you know, this, you know, this is a good way. But just kind of dip your paintbrush down it. Don't stroke, dab. With most of these mixed media colorization products, dabbing is the way to go, not stroking. Let me see when you stroke it, it doesn't want to take right. I mean, it's it's going on okay with this because it has some texture, but but um, if you stroke on say like a flat piece that doesn't have any texture, it is gonna it just doesn't come out right. So you want to dab. And really, you know, if you don't get tons of coverage, you can always let the one coat dry and go back and do another coat. You know, hey, why not? It's it's all right. It's all good. I kind of like the fact that you can see a little bit of the integrity of the metal coming through a little bit on this. So I like a little bit of a shabby kind of appearance. So I'm cool with that. Okay. Now you can just let this air dry if you want. I do like to heat set it. You can use the Ranger Heat It craft tool if you have one. I carry the Doris tools and the reason why is It'll do everything the Ranger Crafted Heat It Tool will do. It's a little bit funky on UT, but we don't use UT so much these days, so it doesn't matter. But um, the, the, the Reese tool gets a whole lot hotter. And it works with the Swelligant traditional patinas better. The Heat It, the heat it Tool, the Ranger Heat It Tool, doesn't, doesn't get hot enough. So I don't see any point in carrying it. I, I, I like the Doris tool better. Actually, too, the Doris tool is a little cheaper, so you save a little money. So that's a little tip for you, too. I'm always looking for ways to save you money if I can. Like, don't go buy some reliefing block from the craft store. All you need is a nail block. If they wear out, they're going to wear out the same same way. Just go down to the dollar store and get a bag full of them for a couple bucks. Save your money. Don't buy a... A cup warmer from a craft store, you know, unless they've got them on a special buy or something, pay sixteen ninety nine or some ridiculous price. They're five dollars. That's all you need to pay. You should have one though. I'm gonna heat set this. Now after I do this, I'm gonna have to get my popper time because it's gonna be hot. This mat is a ranger mat and it cleans up really nice. Like any of this paint mess is gonna just wipe right off of it. So they're kind of expensive, and I've carried them off and on, and I switched off because I didn't like the fact that they cost so much. I think they're kind of overpriced, but nothing works as good as they do. And you can cut them up. Like, I could have made this half this size, you know, so 
in the long run, you know, you kind of sometimes get what you pay for. So now this is set on both sides, but it's very hot because that tool is very hot. So I have to pet, put it aside. But that's basically the technique. That's all, all you do is just kind of sponge it on. Now this is some neat stuff I tried. I took these, which just kind of came in. They're a two-sided puffy charm. They're made from old 40s tooling, 40s, 50s tooling. Very, very cool. This is our chocolate ox finish. So I said, well, I wonder what that would look like with a little color on it. Is that cool? That really looks neat. I love that. And then I took some more of the French charms. So here's one with that teal sprayed down. This I was telling you about the, the Ranger Perfect Pro. You have, to, you have to shake it up. It's this. Maybe you have it down with your scrapbooking stuff already. Um, I just have one in copper because I bought it on a lark. I'm not a big scrapbooker, but I've watched Tim Holtz use his stuff all different times and how it will kind of diffuse paint and make it spread and extend it and do all kinds of cool things with the alcohol inks and stuff. And So I thought I'd put it over, ne over the vintage inks and it was really cool. This is what I got. So I've got some kind of sparkly copper over the teal and it looks really ancient and old. So I kind of like it, you know, put together with that. You imagine a bracelet made like that with a bunch of these charms. Neat. Fabulous. Oh, hey, did you see my bracelet? Let's see if I can get, take it off. This is one of these. This has Lumiere paint on it, which unfortunately we're going to be slowly discontinuing because they're not making the exciter packs anymore, and that's how I like to sell it. And I like Lumiere paint, but I think we're going to be able to do anything we need to do with Gilder's Paste, Swalligant, and Vintage. So, you know, you don't need to carry everything in the world. But anyway, this does have Lumiere over it. Um, but it's the same base as this. And I think this one did have it to begin with, too. And I just went over it. The inside with um, the Swalligant brass. And then I did a little bit of the Perfect Pearls things and then set it. And then on the top, I dabbed um, this and this. This is rust. To get that funky 60s pop art orangey thing going on. And then I did my centerpiece, which is a very, very cool piece that we carry. And you'll find our website. This is a flower power pin. It made the way that they were made back in the 60s. Guess what? They still make them. You don't need to carve up the ones you find in the flea market. They still make them, and we carry them. This is in rusty black, and you can see the, the colorization of it. The way the plating comes out is very uneven. We like that. That looks cool. And now you can add some really funky color to this with your vintage inks. And watch me do it. See, now you can, with the rusty black, you can scrub it back. And it will take the swellagant to traditional peanut patinas, especially the green one, Tiffany Green, very nicely because there is iron oxide in this finish, which is like a metal coating, like the metal coatings. So um, it will colorize well for you. However, the chocolate ox doesn't respond to swellagant traditional patinas real well unless you put another metal coating over them. I just started getting it on. So. Um, that's something I learned. Now this is, this is, I just did the vintage. Now I'm going to dip my finger in a little bit of this Swelligant brass metal coating and I'm going to just add a little bit of texture by going over it. It's just kind of like spatter painted. It's kind of like a mix between psychedelic and 50's weeping gold. Is that awesome? And fun and easy and just goes to, you know, however you want to do it, you know. I think I'll put a little bit more. So you can go back over it. Just play. Just fuss and play and just have a big time. Okay. So I'm going to maybe put a little bit more in here. And then I'm going to call that done. And I'm going to heat set it. Just so it gets a nice hard finish. And then, once this is cooled, you can see I've still got texture on there. I didn't get it all brushed out real good. That's the feature of the swell again. It, you can create texture with it, and I like that. I like a little bit of blobbiness. Rejoice in imperfection, as my friend Linnea says. 
and barista. I love it. What's more intriguing than a big hunk of rust? And just watch the patterning on it. How that chemical reaction occurred. Now this is dang hot, so you don't touch it. Okay, guys? Okay, one last thing I'm going to show you is how cool it is to take a bead and make it look like these. Can you get up on these, Rob? Because they're going to roll all over if I move them. Look at that. You can take a raw brass bead like this and you can colorize it and make it look very ancient. However you want. Now you can do this with swallowing it too. You could hit that with some heat and then take your sponge and your swellagant darkening patina and make that dark in a heartbeat. You just have to be careful you don't burn yourself, you know, and they're going to want to roll around. You could do that, and then you could go over it with some of this, if you wanted. But see, I'm going to do it like this. Now, now here's the deal about this. The cool thing is, is just get it all over your hands. <laughs> you know, just get some on your hands and roll your, the beads around in your hands. And you'll coat them just real well. Now, you will see little glints of gold still coming out with this, though. I'm going to get a little bit of this swallowing stuff and put on, too. See, they'll mix right together. They do just fine. The metal coating, that is. The dioxide, that's a different beast. You can't... I don't, I don't think the dioxide is going to work over uh, the vintage inks. I haven't really tried it yet, but it does work over the metal coatings. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, but see, now I've got me got me. I've got me a really cool looking, ancient looking bead in very little time. Now you might want to do an extra coat if you want a real high enameled look to it. But that's basically how it goes. I can give a little more color on it. You know, it's all goes to how you like. So you just play with it till you get it where you want it. Then as for glaze, you can use the vintage glazes over it. I have tried it. It, it works really nice over these beads. I like that, this stuff. Um, you could also use the Swelligant sealant over it. Don't think I would use a resin over this because you have a lot of openings. A resin, um, this kind of a filigree, is, I think you're going to make a mess with that. I wouldn't do that. Uh, Krylon uh, matte spray sealant is a very good way to go. So you might want to you might want to try that. Do that. Um, one last thing I want to tell you. You might see the shimmering one. How did that get like that? Okay. Well, it got like that because I painted this with the vintage first. Then I sprayed it down with this, and then I put a little bit of a Perlex. I think it's Perlex brand. Macro, yeah, this is Prolex Macro Pearl with my finger, <laughs> and that's what made. It. I don't know if I can quickly do that because we're running out of time, but I'm gonna try and show you. Just squirt it down. Okay, now it's on there. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna heat it a little bit, and it does roll around. You may know a way better way to do this than me. Okay, no doubt you do. So I'm not a big scrapbooker. I don't use a lot of this type of thing, but I just found on a lark. It says it's for porous surfaces, but you can use it on metal if you heat set it, and it'll be fine. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, of course, now this is going to pollute this little jar, but for the sake of teaching you, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, I'm going to just dip this on here. And normally, you know, you need um, some kind of a medium, like embossing ink or something like that. But in this case, since you're just going for a rough look, and this is hot, you can just dab it on. And it'll, it's going to set. I'm going to show you how. It's already setting because it's hot. What you want is you want to get your Pearl X to kind of melt onto it. Because, you know, it's got like a resin binder and it's just like perfect pearls. So you can do this with perfect pearls too. And it's going to create some texture as well. It's not going to be flat. Once you get that melted onto there, then you're done. And then, of course, don't touch it. If you need to fix it up a little bit, you're going to have to do it later because... I'm going to throw that back there in that nasty water. Um, it's, it's real hot. So anyway, we got to go, but I hope you enjoyed this. I'll have more for you soon. Um, and uh, we've got all this stuff at the website, except for this. We'll have this soon. But we have all the swell again restocked today, and we've got the vintage inks and gilder's paste, so come and play.